Good day, everyone. I am Michael Burnham, a senior principal scientist with the Process Development Group here at Wuxi Aptech in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And on behalf of everyone at Wuxi Aptech, I'd like to thank the folks at Cell Culture Dish for allowing me to present Wuxi Aptech's viral clearance strategy, the Total Viral Challenge. Before we begin, I'd like to introduce myself. Again, I'm Mike Burnham. I've been involved with viral clearance operations here at Wuxi Aptech for more than 20 years, serving as director of the viral clearance and virus purification departments. In these roles, I've served as study director for numerous viral clearance protocols, as well as provide technical advice regarding the design of viral clearance studies and scale-down processes. Additionally, I've led teams focused on developing new and novel purification strategies for multiple virus types to improve the growth, assay, and quality of viruses used in viral clearance studies in addition to developing and validating assays for new and emerging viruses. Currently, I'm working in the process development commercialization team here at Wuxi Aptech to develop a process for the GMP manufacturer of recombinant lengthy viral vectors. Throughout this webinar, I will detail our service platform for viral clearance in an effort to drive higher log reduction values through the optimization of process steps and study design. I'll provide a brief review of the viral clearance tools Wuxi Aptech uses to achieve a targeted log reduction values and how these can be incorporated into a successful study design. Additionally, I will focus on our viral challenge spiking strategy using a total viral load challenge to target LRVs or log reduction values for each process step evaluated within a study. This total viral load strategy has been utilized for the past three years and all the studies that have used this approach have been reviewed and widely approved by all regulatory agencies. Viral clearance is a critical component of the regulatory submission and approval process. These studies help to define the overall safety of the drug product by means of evaluating the capacity of a manufacturer's downstream purification process to eliminate potential viral contaminants. Wuxi Aptech has successfully completed numerous viral clearance studies for our customers, and we have been presented with many considerations and challenges over the years, i.e., difficult processes, products, materials, and process step limitations. This has helped us to better design and define a viral clearance platform and testing strategy for continued success. Additionally, we have cultivated relationships with numerous companies and vendors over the years to get a better understanding of the nuances with working with their products in an effort to improve study design and execution. From our experience with working with our varied customer base, we have developed a viral clearance service platform to drive higher log reduction values through the optimization of process steps, as well as help define the limits of the purification processes themselves. There are several tools that Wuxi Aptech utilizes to increase the potential success within a viral clearance study. Technical aspects such as our highly purified virus preparations, as well as our highly sensitive plaque assay, has to help to significantly improve the overall log reduction values that can be achieved within a viral clearance study. Additionally, we have implemented a new spiking strategy for viral clearance studies referred to as the Total Viral Load Challenge that has been successfully implemented several years ago. This Total Viral Load Challenge strategy was developed in an effort to provide more consistent performance for process steps within replicate runs, as well as across multiple products and platforms. The basis for this new spiking strategy is that we focus on spiking load or starting materials based on the total viral load as opposed to the traditional percent spike model. So early viral clearance studies were performed strictly based on a volumetric percentage of virus added to the load materials prior to processing. These guidance documents limited the overall viral load to less than 10% of the total volume to be processed. Historically, our customers were utilizing 1 to 2% spikes for column chromatography steps, 0.1 to 1% for filtration, and 5% for inactivation steps. While we have certainly executed many successful viral clearance studies following these typical percent spikes, there were instances in which lower than expected clearance was achieved for specific process steps. Though reasonable explanations for these unexpected results could be determined, we wanted to further address concerns about this unexpected data and how to better plan for successful viral clearance. So through this exercise, Wuxi Aptech's viral clearance technical team used our experience and knowledge of viral clearance, as well as queried our viral clearance database to determine what factors contributed to performance issues and data variability. We reviewed multiple aspects of effective and unsuccessful studies 
and compiled and analyzed these results to determine what trends could be deduced from real-world examples and be readily applied to study design to provide customers with a better chance of success. As a result, we implemented the total viral load strategy into our current platform as an effort to reduce the variability our customers may have between projects and regulatory submissions. For the remainder of today's talk, I'd like to focus on virus removal filtration. For many biological products, virus removal filtration is included to reduce the risk of adventitious viruses from the final product. It is considered the only true robust process step for typical biologic processing capable of completely removing all virus types, and companies often rely on this step to show complete clearance of each virus evaluated within a study, especially in cases where other process steps obtain low clearance. However, without careful consideration during the design of the viral validation, this step can provide challenges to the overall success of the viral clearance study. Historically, these challenges have been virus breakthrough, particularly with small parvoviruses, interactions between the product and virus stocks, as well as poor performance, i.e. plugging of the filter. Each of these factors can significantly influence the scale-down model and may impact the success of the regulatory submission. So, as a CMO, how do we better control the design of viral clearance studies to optimize results? Our viral clearance technical team evaluated Wuxi Aptek's viral clearance database for examples of unexpected or variable data. We focused on the virus removal filtration step. Within that data set, in all cases where the virus is greater than 30 nanometers and the smallest pore size virus removal filters were evaluated, no virus breakthrough was observed. However, when we performed a deeper dive into the data, we noted that parvoviruses showed the most variability in the clearance data obtained. We started to observe a trend in the data that when the filter was challenged with a high viral load, in these instances, a total amount of greater than nine logs of parvovirus challenged. There were many more instances of virus breakthrough and variability between the replicate data as shown in the table above. Upon further review of those studies in which complete clearance of parvovirus was observed, we noted another trend in the data that started to lead to more favorable and expected results. When viral challenges of 7.5 to 8 logs were used during the viral clearance studies, we noted more consistency in the results with little variability between the replicates as well as complete retention of the parvovirus. Additionally, coupled with our large volume testing, we were able to show high log reduction values achieved for each run. When implementing filtration study designs, we became more concerned about the total viral load rather than just percent spikes. As mentioned previously, we have obtained successful viral clearance for our customers when percent spiking strategies were used. Though we've standardized our processes for production and purification of all virus stocks used at Wuxi Aptek, there may be slight differences in the titers and, to some degree, the purity levels of each virus lot. Spiking strictly based on percentages may lead to over-challenging the capacity of a particular process step and reduce the potential clearance that could be achieved. Spiking with a set amount of virus per step, the total viral load approach, could help eliminate some uncertainty from the viral clearance study. Spiking based on the titer of each specific lot of virus can allow for consistency between projects as we are now targeting a specific total amount of viral challenge per step. Using our knowledge of successful viral clearance process steps coupled with the use of our ultra-pure, high-titer virus preps and our large volume sampling, we are better able to achieve a target LRV for each process step. This allows our customers some assurance of the clearance they can predict for their viral clearance study prior to executing. We have initially implemented the total viral load strategy for filtration studies and have since expanded the same approach for all process steps. As mentioned previously, we have successfully implemented this strategy for over three years now, and the data from these studies has been reviewed and approved by multiple regulatory agencies. When performing this type of spiking strategy, there are several considerations to take into account. The process step, the product purity, the virus titer, product throughput, historical data, and so on. I will now walk through how we calculate the viral challenge. In the example provided, we are spiking 
200 mL of load material with virus, having a titer of 3.3 times 10 to the 8th PFU per mL. Using the percent spike approach, 1% volume to volume in this case, we would be spiking greater than 2 mL of virus into the total amount of load material, resulting in a challenge of more than 8.8 .8 logs of virus. Using the total viral load challenge in which we targeted 7.5 logs of total PFUs, we would be spiking only 100 microliters of virus into the load. In the percent spike model, we are challenging the process step with 20 times more virus than the total viral load challenge. And based on historical data, this may result in performance issues, potential viral breakthrough, and potentially a lower LRV or even inconsistency in the replicate run. If these results do occur during the validation runs, this may call into question the robustness of the process step, resulting in questions from the regulatory agencies during review. Having a more fine-tuned approach to viral clearance study design can yield benefits at the early stage of the submission process. With a more scientifically sound study design, targeting high LRVs from the more robust process steps, there may be situations in when the target clearance is achieved in fewer process steps, allowing for a reduced scope of work for each process and less resources dedicated to the early phase study design. In 2016, Bushi Aptek entered into a collaboration with Asahi Kase to test out the total viral load challenge strategy in an effort to establish best practices for viral clean study designs with the Planova brand of virus removal filters, essentially to try to find the right spike level for these filters. We set out to design studies that would provide sufficient retrovirus and parvovirus removal using the Planova brand of filter, Wuxi Aptek's ultra-pure virus spikes, and our assay techniques under adequate viral challenge conditions, and collectively prove that one does not need to over-challenge the filtration process to yield sufficient log reduction values. The scope of the study was as follows. Human IgG in a low-conductivity phosphate buffer solution would be spiked with Wuxi Aptek's ultra-pure grade of MVM or XMULV at a total viral load challenge of 7.5 log PFUs. Extra volume testing will be performed to achieve a target clearance of greater than six logs. For each filter type, high and low operating conditions would be tested. Following virus spike, low material is processed through each filter and feed materials collected into two 100 liter per meter square fractions, followed by a 10 minute complete system depressurization and process pause and a single 15 liter per meter square buffer flush conducted at the initial operating pressure. Each sample was collected in a separate fraction. Each fraction was assayed separately using Wuxi Aptek standard plaque assay methodologies for both MVM and XMULV. Large volume testing was conducted on the simulated pool to reduce the assay limit of detection and increase the reported LRVs in samples where no virus was detected. In each of the resulting filtration runs, no infectious virus was detected in any filtrate sample during the study, and there was no measurable impact of the low pressure or process pause on the viral clearance capacity of the filter. High log reduction values were achieved for each of the filtrate pool samples, and of note, no variance was observed between the replicate samples signifying the consistency and robustness of the process step. Similar results were achieved with the Planova BioEx filter. Again, no variance was observed between the replicants and high LRVs were obtained across all experiments. Additionally, within the study design, single runs were performed for each condition with purified retrovirus. As expected, no retrovirus was detected in the filtrate fractions for each of the conditions tested. There was no impact due to the extended process pause as well. It also must be noted that in all conditions performed in the collaboration, minimal to zero flux decay was observed during the runs, indicating that the viral challenge had no impact on the performance of the filter. In summary, the data shows both brands of Planova filters displayed good retention of both virus types as no breakthrough was observed and high log reduction values were achieved. There was little to no impact on the flux compared to unspiked material, and importantly, no log reduction value impact observed from the low operating pressures or the process pauses.
This study demonstrated the benefits of utilizing the total viral challenge approach in the design of viral clearance studies. By limiting the total viral challenge to 7.5 log PFU, we were successful in achieving highly robust viral log reduction value while minimizing the risk of viral clearance artifacts that have previously been a cause for concern. So I'd like to thank our collaborators from Asahi Kasei, Pauline Nemitz, Daniel Strauss, Isha Vaez, Nana Takahashi, and now Son Hirotomi. From Wushi Aptek, I'd like to thank Joe Hughes, Kara Romanowski, Dana Cipriano, Bridget Moran, Alex Schwartz, and the rest of our viral clearance and virus production teams. I'd like to thank you for your time. My contact information is provided in the slide below. If you have any questions about our total viral load strategy, as well as our viral clearance services, please do not hesitate to contact me. Thank you again.